Hey guys, it's the market update. In this video, we've got some really interesting fundamental data here on both Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is from Fidelity. You've got some other data as well, just showing you know how the fundamental demand for these blockchains is going. We're also going to compare that to some macro data as well, because you know the macro is changing a lot right now. The Fed raised 25 basis points yesterday, but it wasn't really that. If you listen to the uh, the meeting afterwards, you know Jerome Powell was saying. We, we think we're basically done at this point and we're actually quite worried about what's happening in the future. Now, that feeds through to a lot of different um, pricing of different assets. And so we're going to go through that in this video. As for Bitcoin right now, though, you can see we're actually still in this uptrend channel. This has turned into an uptrend channel right now from this recovery. So we had that recovery from the bottom. We've now turned that into an uptrend channel. Now, uptrends, of course, come to an end at some point. Uh, maybe a consolidation or something like that or just through that trend um, but obviously as you can see in the previous uptrend that carried on for a lot longer we're in a different scenario right now that was the covid stimulus and so it's going to be a very different scenario here um, but it may be a bit slower it may be a bit more choppy for sure but we're still in the kind of accumulation phase of the market cycle which i'm going to go through later on in this video but as we can see here just this long-term price action you had the bull market and interestingly the rsi down here uh, topped out around this level here which was kind of this impulse now after that the price action actually got weaker so yes the price action the price went up down up um, but the price strength was coming down and that's obviously a sign that that kind of bull market is weakening and then the price action has been weakening the whole time through this bear market interestingly when we've had this recovery here you know for me this is not a dead cat bounce you can see the, re the relative strength is making higher lows as well so you've got this confluence correlation here between prices going up but also the strength of that move is very strong and so for me that's just a, a very decent uh, sign that we're in you know kind of a different phase of the market where strength is coming back fundamental strength and that's the theme of this video if you are a trader though uh, deposit bonus on bybit up to four thousand dollars check the details by that link just sign up make a deposit get the deposit and trading bonus there uh, details down in the description so yeah, fundamentals for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. What I'm talking about here is like, are more human beings using these networks? Because the, fund the fundamental assumption here is that Bitcoin, ETH, and many other crypto networks as well, I'm just using these because they have the, the most data, uh, these are growing, right? So more people are using them to do stuff. And if that's happening over the long term, that's the fundamental secular growth that we're investing in. And of course, we take advantage of economic cycles, which we'll tie up in this video. So firstly, this is from Fidelity. Um, Bitcoin's price now sits comfortably above two key levels, the realized price and its 200 week SMA simple moving average indicating these may now now both act as support levels rather than resistance now interestingly here the 200 week simple moving average is actually a very good indicator of bitcoin's long-term secular growth as an asset so if we just have that assumption that more people use it over time more people will store value create wallets and use the network and so just in general over cycles you get this general kind of upwards movement of the value of that network now the 200 sma is like the literal first indicator that you'll ever put on a chart and it just follows it uh, roughly up and every time that the actual price comes down to that level has in previous history been a great buying opportunity the funny thing here is that Bitcoin's price rarely traded below the 200 week SMA historically in its uh, history. It's usually been above that. Looking back approximately nine years, Bitcoin has traded below this metric for only 9% of all days. What's more interesting is that the vast majority of that, actually 8.86% of that, was this bear market that we've just been through. So in terms of when people say, wow, it's a very good buying opportunity here, and you think, wow, the price has come off so much, uh, it's very weak, but you're seeing now some of that strength return and potentially Bitcoin just move towards more of its kind of secular growth trend after this very uh, strong rate hiking cycle from the Fed that seems to be coming to an end. So, you know, Bitcoin is recovering essentially what, what is being said here. Another thing to look at is not just the price, but you know, is it becoming more useful as a network? Because if it's not useful as a network, then that secular growth is going to eventually stop. Now, one of the uh, biggest use cases for Bitcoin recently has been fairly um, disliked by a lot of people in the Bitcoin community, but it's inscriptions and ordinals. 
So as you can see here, in fact, before inscriptions and ordinals, only 40% of block space was being used. Uh, now this is closer to, closer to 80%. So for me, Bitcoin is an open network, which means you can't control who uses it and for what. That's the whole point. And so an open network means that people can uh, invent things and essentially uh, grow the network without the permission of anyone else. And so for me, this isn't a bad or a good thing. It just shows that Bitcoin is doing what it's intended to do, which is, you know, have block space there that is to be used for whatever you want it to be used for if you want to develop for it. And so whether we agree with it or not, whether we think it's a good thing or not, is fairly irrelevant. As we can see here for miners, finding a block has the same difficulty and therefore the same cost, regardless of whether the block is full or not. And so having full blocks just means that the network is more useful, it's more used, um, and more people are using it. And I just think that's generally a very good thing for the secular growth of Bitcoin, because a lot of uh, a lot of uh, kind of criticisms about Bitcoin isn't useful for anything. Well, if block space is full, then it's a useful network and it's a successful network. And I think that just ties into the secular growth. That's what we want. That's what I would want anyway, is a network that is being used to its full capacity and then having scaling networks on top like the Lightning Network. So for me, this is just good news that it's actually being used and people are demanding the block space. A tweet here as well showing that Bitcoin activity is basically an all time high. So we remember this, we have Bitcoin activity all time high, price still 50, 60% below the previous price all time high, but with macro changing right now into potentially looking forward to an easier environment. I know a recession may be coming, but you know, if you're a long time investor investing through a few years, you, you kind of can't really focus on that. You have to focus on fundamental growth. The network data about active addresses, transactions, UTXO count and block size, all time high. There's not much more to say. You have a network here that is being used more than ever in its history and the price is starting to show that secular strength. Plus the macro environment is in six to 12 months time, in my opinion, gonna be a lot easier than it is now. Maybe that feeds through to price as well in terms of the Bitcoin cycle, the macro cycle, and just tying it all together in terms of what's the investment case here. It's a similar story for ETH where block space is in demand, fees are being paid. So the difference with ETH is that uh, obviously there's no miners anymore and so a lot of the fees that are paid just go into burning more ETH. What we want to look at here is this right here, which is the blue. You can see the reduction in the supply of ETH obviously going down uh, and becoming negative at this point. So we can actually see this in real time. So this is the ETH supply since the merge and as you can see, it's just pretty much been straight negative. And this essentially is the opposite of supply, right? So fees being paid, burning ETH, reducing the supply, um, essentially all of those fees going back into purchasing ETH. So ETH is being reduced in supply right now uh, by about 0.71% a year. This is changing though, dependent on gas usage. You can see here the time frame over these 30 days has basically been all uh, higher than what would be needed to keep ETH at the same level. So it's a network that is being used and essentially you know, earning huge amounts of fees and it's a profitable network. What's actually paying fees on, Unis on, uh, on Ethereum right now is Uniswap. So the trade of fungible tokens, we have uh, Seaport, which is OpenSea, Blur, so the trade of non-fungible tokens, and then stable coins. You have a layer two here with Arbitrum, which is trying to scale ETH as well. So all of these users are um, you know, using gas and paying for gas, and that means that the supply of Ethereum is negative at this point. So as an investment, you know, this is very uh, pleasing to see if you hold Ethereum that essentially, you know, this is a profitable network at this point and it's growing and the demand is still very high. So fundamental growth, Bitcoin, ETH and other network networks as well. And we're starting to come to the end of the tightening cycle and the macro cycle. So I think it's clear what part of the cycle that we're in right now, which is the end of the tightening cycle and the pause before we see how bad the recession is. There still could be a ton of volatility in this. In fact, uh, a few videos ago, we saw how the volatility of Bitcoin within this part of the cycle can be up to around 30, 40% in terms of drawdowns. Uh, so that's more than likely uh, to happen. There's a lot of uh, opportunity here, a lot of weakness and chop and trade that will happen in this part of the cycle because this is not a bull market. Uh, so that's just where I see things. It's much easier to predict time uh, and parts of the cycle rather than prices. 
Bitcoin could be 30 to 40% higher or lower than here at any given time. Um, but the cycle, the part of the cycle you're in is important. We're in that recovery and consolidation phase, in my opinion. If you are a trader, though, buy a bit deposit bonus down in the description up to $4,000. I'm James with MoneyZG. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.